Today, FDA approvals in melanoma, pancreatic cancer, and soft tissue sarcoma, new data in lung cancer, and regulatory advancements in kidney cancer. Hello and welcome to OncLive News Network. I'm Laura Jones. The FDA has approved the first in-class oncolytic immunotherapy, TVEC, for the local treatment of unresectable, cutaneous, subcutaneous, and nodal lesions in patients with melanoma recurrent after initial surgery. The approval was based on results from the Phase 3 Optum study. In the pivotal trial, TVEC significantly extended durable response rates compared with GM-CSF. In the final overall survival analysis, a non-significant 4.4-month improvement was observed. Melanoma is a serious disease that can advance and spread to other parts of the body where it becomes difficult to treat, Dr. Karen Midthen, director of the FDA's Center for Biologics, Evaluation and Research, said in a statement. This approval provides patients and healthcare providers with a novel treatment for melanoma. The FDA has approved MM398 liposomal renotecan in combination with 5-FU and leucovorin as a treatment for patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer following prior administration of a gemcitabine-based regimen. The approval followed a priority review designation and was based on data from the Phase 3 Napoli-1 trial. In the combination arm, the median overall survival was 6.1 months, compared with 4.2 months with the 5-FU and leucovorin alone. The median progression-free survival was 3.1 months for the combination, compared with 1.5 months with the control. At 12 weeks, 57% of patients treated with the combination were alive and progression-free compared with 26% with 5-FU and leucovorin alone. The objective response rate by RESIST criteria was 16% for the MM398 combination versus 1% for the control. The treatment was approved along with a boxed warning regarding severe neutropenia and diarrhea which is a common adverse event associated with arenotecan-based therapy. Additionally, the FDA noted that MM398 should not be used as a monotherapy since there were more adverse events associated with the single agent versus the combination. The FDA approved trabectidin for the treatment of patients with unresectable or metastatic liposarcoma and leiomyosarcoma subtypes of soft tissue sarcoma, following previous treatment with chemotherapy, including an anthracycline. In the pivotal phase three trial, trabectidin reduced the risk of disease progression by 45% versus decarbazine. There was also a slight non-significant survival trend with trabectidin. The median overall survival was 13.7 months with trabectidin versus 13.1 months with the control. After 329 events for the endpoint of progression-free survival, patients receiving trabectidin had a statistically significant reduction in the risk of disease progression with a median PFS of 4.2 months versus 1.5 months with decarbazine. At three months, the PFS rates were 56% versus 34%, and at six months, the PFS rates were 37% versus 14% for the two arms, respectively. Results from the Keynote 010 trial showed that pembrolizumab extended overall survival versus docetaxel for patients with non-small cell lung cancer. The international open-label trial randomized 1,034 patients with pdl one positive non-small cell lung cancer to pembrolizumab at the FDA-approved dose of 2 mg per kilogram, an elevated dose of 10 mg per kilogram, or 75 mg per meter squared of docetaxel. All three regimens were administered at three-week intervals. A top-line analysis revealed that pembrolizumab was associated with longer overall survival compared with docetaxel treatment in both the standard dose and higher dose arms. PFS was also improved with both doses of pembrolizumab versus chemotherapy in the high PDL1 expressors. Data from the study were not yet made available. 
Drug developer Merck plans to submit data from the trial to the FDA by the end of the year for full regulatory approval. Rolling submission of a new drug application for cabozantinib has been initiated for patients with advanced renal cell carcinoma who have received one prior therapy. The application for the drug was based on findings from the Phase three Meteor trial, which demonstrated a 42% reduction in the risk of progression or death for cabozantinib versus everolimus in patients with advanced RCC. By investigator assessment, the median PFS was 7.4 months with cabozantinib and 5.3 months with everolimus. At the interim analysis of the full study population, a trend toward improvement in overall survival was observed. However, this did not pass a high bar for statistical significance. Rolling submission of an NDA is allowed as part of a breakthrough therapy designation received in August. Once fully submitted, the FDA will review the application within 60 days, at which point the agency will assign a review deadline under the Prescription Drug User Fee Act. The FDA issued a complete response letter to Spectrum Pharmaceuticals informing the drug company that its new drug application for the use of captazole-enabled melphalan in multiple myeloma will not be approved in its current form. Spectrum was seeking marketing approval for the agent for the treatment of patients with multiple myeloma prior to autologous stem cell transplantation, as well as for the palliative treatment of patients with myeloma for whom oral therapy is not appropriate. The NDA was based on results from a multi-center open-labeled phase 2B study in which the overall response rate was 95% among 61 patients. The chairman and CEO of Spectrum said the company would work swiftly to address the comments provided by the FDA in the complete response letter. This week on Oncolive.com, new interviews with lead researchers in the field of colorectal cancer. We spoke with Dr. Tanio Spekai Saab, professor of medicine and pharmacy at The Ohio State University, and Dr. Gabriella Kiorian, associate professor at the University of Washington, an associate member of the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Institute, to discuss the latest research as well as the latest thinking when it comes to the genetics and management of metastatic colorectal cancer. Check out these great interviews on OncLive.com. And that'll do it for today. Thanks so much for watching OncLive News Network. I'm Laura Jones. We'll see you next time.